Hello, everyone. My name is Fred Cafiti. I'm a fourth year surgical resident and by education uh, biomedical engineer from Florida Atlantic University. Here to discuss my proof of concept study modeling the effects of shallow placement of the da Vinci long trocar on the muscular abdominal wall. We have no disclosures. The da Vinci long trocar is effectively the same as the standard trocar, except for that it adds an additional five centimeters to the distal end of the trocar only. This allows the surgeon to traverse a prohibitively thick abdominal wall in instances where the standard trocar cannot. Uh, in these instances, the black marker that's printed on every robotic um, uh, trocar cannula, which is the rotational center point of motion, is placed uh, shallow, uh, and it's not placed where it's meant to be at the muscular fascia. To understand the RCM and what it means, we have to understand it twofold. In traditional laparoscopy, the RCM is naturally created by the fascia fixating uh, around the shaft of the trocar and the surgeon's micrometer level feedback proprioception naturally moving uh, to the, uh, the points of least resistance uh, around this natural point. A robotic arm does not have this proprioception, and so the RCM has to be artificially created and preserved in the design of the robotic arm. To look at this further, I'll just go over some brief uh, overviews of how the arm moves. Um, in left-right motion, there is an axis that connects uh, a uh, motorized joint in the back of the arm to the RCM, uh, which is that black mark on the cannula. As this rotates left and right, so does the arm, and that's how you get left-right motion. The up-down motion is a little bit more complex, but the principle is the same. There are a series of joints, there are a series of links between these joints, and angular motion of one of these joints is preserved around each one of these, such that there is a parallelogram that is created here. Um, the top side of the parallelogram slides back and forth, whereas the bottom side of the parallelogram stays stationary, maintaining that RCM point in space, allowing it to change only orientation but not position. So now that we see why the black mark, regardless of length of trocar or size of trocar, has to be the exact distance on every single type of trocar from the head, now we encounter the problem. Um, if you place the RCM too short, then you create lateral displacement of the muscular abdominal wall. In the picture on the right, you'll see this labeled by the yellow, uh, little yellow line uh, labeled D. To model this, we look at a geometric representation of this, um, and I, if I had time, I'd go over this, but there are a series of parameters um, that are within the confines of what the robot can do, as well as what, uh, within the confines of what we can do, um, uh, what we do with the robot as well, to uh, derive an expression that is uh, D, which is the displacement of the abdominal wall, um, uh, relating it to S, which is the shallowness of the trocar, and then X and Z, which are the position point in the abdominal cavity of the instrument tip. This creates a very convoluted graph, which unless you could rotate this in 3D, you don't see very well. So to simplify this, we looked at two simple parameters. We look at uh, angulation of the trocar from neutral midline, which is theta, and then S, which is our shallowness of the RCM. We can create a very nice mesh plot here, which gives you a sense of how uh, when the angulation is changed or trocar shallowness is changed, what the lateral displacement of the abdominal wall is. What I want to point out here is on that z-axis, the lateral displacement axis, we're talking on the order of centimeters, not on the order of millimeters. So some micro changes will make some pretty impressive um, uh, moves on the displacement on that abdominal wall. To really appreciate this, though, we should look at some tangible examples, and for the sake of time, I'll just look at the last one. Um, so in this instance, if a surgeon places the trocar one centimeter shallow, places the RCM one centimeter shallow, and we have the trocar angulated at about 39 degrees, which is sort of the angle that you do an inguinal tap block with, a similar, uh, similar angle to that, um, then you, we, using the expression down there on the bottom right, D equals S tan theta, um, you get a fascial lateral displacement, which is effectively the same size as an eight millimeter trocar. Trocar. So you're putting in an 8 millimeter trocar and then you're displacing it to the side another 8 millimeters. That's a lot of displacement. The implications of this are that this creates serious potential for making larger defects than the original intended size of the trocar site. Historically, trocar site herniations are documented mostly in unclosed trocar sites of greater than 10 millimeters. So uh, an 8 millimeter long robot or robotic trocar, although you feel as 8 millimeter is going to be short, at the end of a case, um, uh, you'll, you sort of have this false sense of security, um, thinking that uh, you're, you're left with an 8, but you may have a larger one. So the conclusions and takeaways here are, uh, one, attention to proper trocar RCM placement is paramount to reduce trocar site herniation risk. And then our recommendation is if you're going to cheat the RCM. If you have to, if you can't get it to the fascia, you're obligated to close that 8 millimeter trocar. Future studies need to be performed to uh, evaluate the biomechanics of the abdominal wall and how much actual displacement it can take before it strains. And then, of course, clinical studies looking at trocar site herniations. Thank you very much. Happy to take questions.